Now Wonderful. for the next half an hour with John Man, who's been involved in some very, very special occasions. it now it's beginning to open up Adair from distance has scored Portugal have never won a major trophy they are 11 minutes away from getting their hands on the European Championship it's Cristiano Ronaldo to win the Champions League Real Madrid are the kings of Europe again Mark Klettenberg blows the whistle Spurs haven't won here they have been held to a 2-2 draw and it means that Leicester City are the Barclays Premier League champions. Yes, the Euro 2016 final where Portugal beat France. Liverpool beating Cardiff in the 2012 League Cup final. Ronaldo firing Real Madrid to glory in 2016. And the infamous battle of the bridge between Chelsea and Spurs which handed Leicester, well, helped Leicester win the Premier League. Yeah, and the man in the middle for all of those games was legendary Premier League referee Mark Clattenberg. He's taken charge of 297 Premier League matches and we're absolutely to say he's, uh, he's joining us right now. His brand new book, The Whistleblower, it hits the shelves today. Mark, a very, very good morning. Morning, Mark. Good morning, all. Good to talk to you and thanks for joining us. I'm just going to read you something, Mark, and it, it's from the book. It says, I'm in the summer of 2016, the number one referee in Europe. I have just taken charge of the FA Cup, Champions League and European Championship finals. Yet I am only thinking about one thing, quitting the Premier League. Now the question has to be why? Uh, I just lost I lost complete look motivation after you've refereed all these finals. The only other... <laughs> chance that I had was to referee in the World Cup and I had absolutely no chance of refereeing the World Cup final. And people say, why could you not referee the World Cup final? Okay, England were certainly going to be better in the tournament than they were in 1996. Also, two European referees have refereed the last two World Cup finals, so that was never going to be three. And therefore, also, if I refereed the World Cup final, I would have been one of the most successful in the world ever because no other referees refereed the World Cup final, Euro final every other final gone so it was absolutely no chance of the motivation was zero and plus Saudi Arabia came along and offered us a load of money and I thought why not let's protect my family yeah what about um, in terms of refs Mark uh, God, God, Jack, I'm a, Jack Taylor was he was he the last one to ref a, a 74 what, was it World Cup was it, was he no, no 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 Howard, Howard Webb was, uh, Howard, Howard. Webb. Howard. Yep. <clears throat> who, who was who was the refs that you looked up to, Mark? You thought, yeah, I, I want to be like that, or I want to better him. No, it all started when it was when I was younger. It was George Corney because he was from the same region. Yeah, from, from right, I remember so, George. Yeah. So I had George. Then Keith Hackett was the one that brought us to the Premier League. So I always looked up to Keith Hackett, and then it was always after that was going to be Pierre Luigi Colina. He was the one that really, really coached me and and, and helped me, especially. 2014, 2015, he gave us some kick-ins, of course. But what he did was he made us understand the game because I knew the laws of the game, but he taught me certain things in the game about players' tactics. And that's why he was the best in the world because he used to solve things before anything happened. And then he taught me some things in games which certainly helped me in my performances. So I always thought he was... Because I didn't have a father. My father died very young. He died at 49 when I was tw early 20s. He became a father figure to us, so... He was the one that really helped me, especially for in me refereeing. Joe, you were a Kalina fan, weren't you? The way he um, not marched around the pitch, but always felt that when when something was about to blow up, he was there first to sort it quickly. I and loved him. Cell on players. I, I loved him. Sorry, first of all, hello, sir. Nice, sir. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. I, I like how that respect from rugby. You, you don't get that in football. That's for sure. Hey, what are you calling him, Mark? Because Mark's retired. If he was still a ref, I'd call him sir. Okay, fine. We'll go with Sir Mark then, shall we? Sir Mark. No. Um, Kalina. I, uh, Kalina was the best ref. We were having this argument a minute ago. You said that Mark was the best ref ever. Well, and yeah. I said, no, it was Kalina. And you went, no, nah, Kalina, no, he was, he was rubbish. He was I rubbish. didn't say rubbish. You That's... said he was rubbish. You just said because oh. he had like really aggressive eyes and an aggressive face. He got, he, you know, no one challenged him, did he? Do you know what I mean? No, I, no, no one challenged him, but I, 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 he was a he was a very good ref. I wouldn't say he was the best. No, you and who did you say was the Mark. best? Mark's the best. Yeah. Anyway, no, I'll, settle, 
I can settle this argument. Pierre Luigi Clino was the best referee ever. So yeah, I, but he was, he was, your, men, he was your mentor, wasn't he? So you would say yeah, that yeah, you're biased. No, no, I can't say I'm the best because then I'm getting called arrogant. But if I could be a little bit behind him, I would be happy. Just yeah, let, you know you're the best. Mark. Just you let know Alan say you're the best. Alan, Alan who's the best? A Tiny Wharton. I remember Tiny Wharton, man. The times have changed since Tiny Wharton used to stroll about the pitch. I thought Kalina took some beating, to be honest. I thought it was absolutely tremendous. But I was going to ask you, Mark, in, in terms of refereeing nowadays, right, clearly <clears throat> the, the referees and, and officials are under unbelievable scrutiny due to, due to VAR, due to camera angles, due to people watching every incident umpteen times. Do you think VAR has helped... Or hindered the referee and his officials. It's certainly helped. If we if we talk about what five years ago, everybody in football, referees, players, coaches, media, everybody wanted technology in the game. The problem had was the laws are so old that didn't that didn't react to the to the technology itself. So, what for example, offside we couldn't have when we used to think about the. The, uh, the benefit of the doubt always went to the attacking team. What the yeah. technology did, it's toenails and armpits were given offside, which wasn't in the spirit of the game. We also had handballs dealt with differently. A handball by a defender was dealt with differently to the attacking player. Now they're starting to get a little bit better. We're getting a bit more tolerance on the offside. We've changed the off handball law. The things are getting a bit better. But one thing or two things that have really improved for me, we're getting more goals from corners and attacking free kicks because there's less holding in the penalty area than they used to be four years ago. And there's no cheating anymore. There's no diving because diving's getting punished. Okay, we're seeing players being a bit more clever where they leave the foot, where the planted leg mm. is. There's all this, but this clear cheating has been taken out of the game. So if there's been one positive or two positives for me, the holding and, and the simulation's been taken out of the game. And that makes refereeing a little bit easier because if we remember how many times referees used to give the defensive free kick instead of awarding a penalty when there was lots of holes in the corners. That drives me mad, that does. Uh, I still think there's too much of it, personally. Uh, grabbing each other, hauling each other to the ground, it's ridiculous. Nah, I like it. Cool. Do you? Nah, I like ah, it. Well, you would well, like it, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, no, I like that. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.